Grace, peace, mercy be unto you from God, our Father, Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Emmanuel Renee. And I have with me Minister Keith Dorgan. Well, welcome to Merrick Ministry. Happy Saturday, everybody. Welcome. We thank God for it. Um, well, we go. You know, we pray that you enjoy it so far. We're going to talk about acts of love. Acts of love. You know, we're going to talk about that, and I guess you're going to understand what I mean by that. Um, well. And the marriage, right? When when we, we when we stop doing acts of love, it is it is those acts that break. You know, when we stop doing the acts of love, like kindness. Um, you know, when you first meet each other, the reason that you want to be with that person is the acts of love they used to do, bringing flowers, um, cards, and going out to eat, spending time together, communicating. But I believe that. Um, as we get married, those acts begin to stop and it's becoming more less and less in the marriage. Yes, sir. Amen. Until we come to a place where we just exist and that's it, if that we are within the marriage and there's longer acts of love because people are bitter, people are angry, people are upset. Right. But um, those acts of love is those acts that um, break the stony heart. It breaks the heart that is numb, that is hurt, because it shows that you still care. Um, right. Now, at the beginning, those acts were those things that open our hearts to our mate, to let us know they love us and care about us. Right. As time goes on, we stop. It's like it's like a water in a pipe. We just stop, man, because we say to ourselves, "Well, they don't deserve this from me. Wow. They don't deserve." Um, uh, for me to be nice to them, we don't deserve them. Even little things like, oh, you know, I'm going to the store, I see this, let me buy them for them. We stop, they don't deserve that. They don't deserve that no more. She don't deserve no flowers no more. And sometimes I think that um, acts of love would be speaking kind to one another in the marriage. That's an act of love. Um, making the person know that you are present, you are there, and that you care for them and that you love them. Those things are important. Amen. Amen. Um, what What are the acts of love? Right. I think I talked about it a few minutes ago. It talks about listening, communication, gift giving, sexual intimacy. Because the biggest gift you can give is yourself. So, um, sexual intimacy. Even that, when it's time for that, that like, go ahead, take it. I don't care. It's like it's like you know, one is not. It's no gift of love. It's like burden you know um james 2 right james 2 and i think we're going to talk about this a lot Amen. and i'm um, here begins with god's holy word it said what doth it profit my brethren though a man say he have faith and have not worse can faith save him right? right so if you say i love my wife but you don't have nothing to back up i love my husband but there's no backup to what you say. Um, we seem to think that because we say something, that's enough. It is not enough to say, I love you, I care about you. There have to be acts of it to show that those words have meaning and those words are true and those words are right. Now, look what it says. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, right? If you see a brother hungry, a sister hungry, mm -hmm. they don't have no food to eat today. He said, well, praise the Lord, let me pray for you. <laughs> but you got, you got $100 in your pocket. But she said, oh, come on, uh, bro, let me pray for you in Jesus' name. You know, I, I pray somebody has come by and feed you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I pray God sent somebody else and, and feed you and take care of you. And sometimes in the marriage, what we do is we show love to, other, you know, you know, everybody else is a bar mate. We show kindness to everybody else except for our mate. We show acts of love to other people because um, instead of our, our mate. And we say, well, why is it, man? She too hard, man. She too hard. Nah, man, I don't want to be bothered with her. Maybe those acts of love towards your wife will soften your wife to show your wife that you do care because what you're saying to her, I'm not going to show you no acts of love until I feel you deserve that. And, you know, the Bible said that you know, God uh, showed acts of love towards us. Yes. He said, while you are yet sinners, Christ died for you, meaning that you didn't want it and you didn't deserve it, and God gave it to you. 
And a lot of times you have to say that, you know what? God gave me some things I don't deserve. I can give my mate some things they don't deserve either. And, then, and you can say, man, it's hard to do it. It's hard to give them love. It's hard to be tender because they treat me so bad. They treat me such, oh man, such a nasty way. I can't do it. But let me tell you something. Despite that, Jesus showed us the way because that's why we in the book of 1 John. The Bible said, if we are, uh, are born of God, we should supposed to walk as he walked yes, and be as he, you know, uh, Jesus loved people who didn't love him. Yes. Sometimes they may not love you, but you show love anyway towards them. You show kindness towards them anyway. And believe me, it's against your flesh, it's against your heart. It's, it will kill you. Be like, oh, Jesus, oh, I don't know what to do about this situation. Oh, Lord, they don't deserve nothing. But I think that that pressure will bring a type of wolf inside of you to love that person anyway. Sometimes it doesn't mean the situation will be fixed, but at least you show kindness no matter what. Because if you give a cup of water to a stranger, you can keep a, a cup of water to your wife. And you can give a cup of water to your husband. Um, you know, uh, um, if you can talk nice to this brother in the church or the sister in the church, you can talk nice to her. It don't hurt you anyway to say, you know, to talk kindness. Um, because the minute she talks, ah, 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 the minute he talks, what you talking about, Willis? And then you want to get angry with it and get upset with it because we have forgotten to show um, seed, seeds of love. Seeds of love. And I think that seeds of love, when you add it, will begin to grow. Sometimes you can throw all the seed, the ground is not good. Okay, I understand that. But, it, but at the end of the day, you say, hey, I did my part for throwing seed of love. If it didn't grow, that's not on me. But I did my part to show the seed of love. You understand? So not every ground, because I put down, like in my, my uh, yard, I put down some seed. Not every seed I sow, grow. And it doesn't mean it's not in the ground. It's in the ground, but the ground not growing it. Because I look back there, right? I saw corn growing in the backyard. But the corn I planted last year, I didn't plant none this year. So it was still in the ground and it's growing now. So sometimes what you put in now, when you sowing, you don't sow for the now. You sow for the later. And sometimes we say that, um, well, you know what? I'm sowing this seed. I'm, I, I'm, sh I'm showing this acts of love. We want a quick return. And a lot of times that's where we make the mistake and stop because we want things to happen right away. And sometimes seeds don't grow right away. It may grow in the next season and not in the season that you planted in. Yes. Wow. You want to say something? Yeah, it's, it's about time. Mm -hmm. You know, when you... You're in a marriage, when I look at marriage, you know, it's about long suffering. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna deal with things in marriage. But like, I, I love what you're saying about, you gotta keep showing the acts of love. No matter if, if your mate or the husband, they're not doing what they're supposed to, you do your part. You keep doing it. And, let, and, and do it with consistency. Don't look at your mate and say, oh, she's not doing it, he's not doing it. Well, you know what, they don't got no love, they don't care about me. Maybe they might be going through a situation. Maybe they might be going through something in their heart or, or whatever they might be going through. But when you can just show love, despite whatever the situation is in the marriage, you can just keep showing all kinds of love, bringing the flowers. Mm -hmm. I love you. And I just, I see, you know, I miss you today. You know, you, you look beautiful. You know, I, I'm, just, I'm just so glad to see, I'm so glad I'm with you. You know, just things, yeah. Pop, yeah. just little things. Well, people call it the love language. And I think that acts of love, you know, I'm going to call it acts of love. People call it the love language. I can say that acts of love are different from each person. Okay. Right? Acts of love are different. Don't put the same seed that you think you want, and that's what the person wants. So you have to do, uh, um, identify the seeds and the acts of love for them. For me, I love uh, um, gift giving. It's great for me. It works for me. That's good. And I love to hear I love you, and I love to see it. You know, I love to hear you. Oh, I love you. I, lo I love it. And I love uh, um, to be made um, big fuss over at times. You know, just seeds of love, you know. Seeds, seeds of love throughout the day, I mean, is important. Right. Not every minute, but, just, you know, say, I love you. Right, right. Even show a heart, send a heart, yes. kisses. Yes. Those, those are very important yes. to me. Glory. But for my wife, it may be totally different. And for, you know, your mate, it may be different. For you, it's different. 
And I think that we all had to identify the seeds of love. Sometimes that my seed of love can be silence. That's what I need at the moment. Right. The time. Yeah. See, all those are seeds, acts of love for the other person. And um, time alone, you um, uh, um, get your wife a spa day where she go out. That's a seed of love where she can do time on her own and just, especially if you notice she's been working late, working hard, a little stressful, a little thing, you give a seed of love. You understand? Yes, sir. I was watching um, the show um, Shy. You know, they're not married, but I'm just using as an example mm -hmm. where the guy I think it was Christmas and the guy I think is um, played by Iman Shumpert, but the girl, bunch of bags, bunch of bags, right? Uh, Gucci bags, some chicks, that's the best they think. Gucci bags, during, and she was not impressed with that. And he, and she gave him something that had meaning to him, and he loved it. And she said, this is what I'm talking about. You have to give gifts that has meaning to me. It's not the price, it is the thought, and it is the meaning that's good. that it has to me. You understand? That's good. That's good. So a lot of times we say, oh, I'm gonna go buy her a bag. She want a bag. She want to know something that your heart is attached to, that you paid attention to her, that you hurt her. That's how you open her heart up. Those acts of love open a heart huge to be able to love you in the marriage. And then it works in the friendship. It, it works on the love. It works in the caring. It works on all these things. But it starts with seeds of love, acts of love, which at times you may not even get the of the blade in that season right. but you get plenty you be like I'm tired you know you did it for two weeks right. right and I'm tired I'm tired I'm tired I'm tired of that so also learn that in the season no matter what season you in you may be in the season of wheat you know I call the season of wheat the season of pride mm -hmm. like I have a picture right in the time of harvest mm -hmm. you know all wheat dies and all wheat bows down when it's time for harvest all wheat bows down so so all wheat begin to bow down in the midst of all the wheat bowing down right you see all the tears stand up so that's how you identify between the wheat and the tear because eventually all when harvest come all the wheat bows and then it's bowing and shows you what's standing you understand? So wow. you you may be in the season where God is showing on the wheat, the the, the wheat, the the tears in your marriage mm -hmm. and everything like that. But the reason God is allowing you to show the tears so you can kill it, so you can identify those things, you know, mm -hmm. so you can chop it down. Because if you were to chop it down and the heart uh, with with the wheat and the tear, you would pull up the the wheat, the good things, the good seed. So now God will allow the tear season so you can identify right so you can uproot those things so we want to talk about okay okay it's destructive and bad how can we repair it with acts of love and I said that to married couple who are having a bad day having a bad season having a bad time let me give you a wisdom that God does right and he does it every day every day and I think that if you try to, um, you know, um, in the marriage of continuance, right. you're going to have an issue. Um, God create every day to cut off the other days. And every time that God is about to give you, you know, to marry a couple, the reason that you marriage is bad because you think about it, the, um, the accumulative all those days. So there's no ending to those days. But God cut every day as every day. This is the day that the Lord has made. He should rejoice and be glad in it. Then that day is over. This is the day that the Lord has made. I should rejoice and be glad in it. See? So every day is a new beginning. But when you are married, there's no new beginning because you think every day is the same day. And you have to understand that every day is a day to have a new start. And we're gonna to have to learn how to pull up the wheat in the, in, in the night time. We have to pull up the things so we can start a new day and a new beginning in the next day, days 
that God has given us, you know? So um, that's how we start with, um, you know, um, meeting the needs of others in the marriage and doing acts of love. Well, um, I, I, I stop at verse 15, it says, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, be, be you warm and feel, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful, needful to the body, what doth it profit? So you out here prophesying, be good in Jesus' name, hallelujah, glory. It, it's the same thing with your wife. Your wife told you what it needs, what she needs, and your husband tells you what he needs to make the marriage work. And you say, well, be warm and be good, you know. But there's a prophet that we have to show, not only, you know, um, people think that, that um, you know, being to communicate is enough. And I believe, because when I look at this um, scripture, it's not only to talk about it, but but to dress me after I talk to you about it, to warm me after I finish talking about it, to feed me after, you know, I finish talking about it. You know, his must be, oh, we talk about it. So what? We talk about it. It's no different. Uh, 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 to communicate is one thing, but to communicate, um, uh, uh, to communicate and not to meet the need is the, is the same way as a person seeing you no food, no clothes, and say be well and be good, because it's okay to communicate. But are you going to dress me and cover me and make sure I'm good? Because it's, and this is what the frustration for. Because communication doesn't necessarily mean a person will change. Communication doesn't mean that a person will give you what you need. So in the marriage, it's about giving me what I need, um, giving each other what we need. So are you going to date? Oh, we talk, blah, 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 all this happened. Okay, is there gonna be a change? Are you gonna feed me? Are you gonna warm me? Are you gonna put a plate of food on me? Are you gonna make sure, you know, on all those things that I've told you I need, you meet me? And that's the difference. Because it's like communication is great, but communication without deed is also wrong. Amen. So this is why I said in verse 17, even so faith, if they have not works, is dead being alone, right? So faith without works is dead. Well, I'm believing God to fix my marriage. I always say that. So what do you, okay, if you believe in God, what acts of believing are you doing? What acts of believing? I have a little picture with two people walking by faith. They both plant a, 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 a seed in the ground. Mm -hmm. One girl is praying over the seed. Lord Father, I thank you for the seed. And then you have another girl who have a water who's pouring over the seed. Mm -hmm. And they said, this, she's not praying, but she's pouring water. This also is prayer. The water is also a act of faith for growth to happen because you're doing something. A lot of times with Christians, you pray, but you ask God to water. But if you really believe God to fix something, you will be one watering your marriage and expecting God to give the increase. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. That's yes. also the acts of love. Yes. You know, this, you, you, this, this is, wow. So you, you drop us inside. You, you, this is so good for people out there to hear this because you really, like, waking up their marriages, showing them through God and directing them what to do. Don't just be in a marriage and think that it's not going to be no trials, no tribulations. It's not going to be nothing. Whatever it is, you got to know that you, like you saying, you got to keep watering. You got to do your part. And it's a, one thing I loved about the Bible, you always say this, and it's so real, consistency. It got to be consistency in the marriage. You know, if, if, if I think in consistency in the marriage, I think, I mean, we talk about bending. I think if every, both couples in the marriage, if they bend with consistency, and show the acts of love that I care. Show me that you care. And then another thing too, you being in the marriage, you gotta know what the other person want, what the other person need. You gotta pay attention to them. You really gotta pay attention to them. See what they want. It's, it's little, and what we always say, Father, it's little things that you gotta do in the marriage. Mm -hmm. Because little things in the marriage, it makes it, it may, it, it, it'll grow. It's not, you can't always look for the, uh, the big thing. Forget about the big things. Just coming home, just saying, girl, I love you. I, I, I miss you. And like you said, well, hearts, giving hearts. I'm just thinking about you. Just mm -hmm. because little things to touch our heart. 
It may will melt her heart if you just show that I love you, honey. You're yeah. beautiful. Yeah. I always say that a home cooked dinner is better than a than a restaurant cooked dinner. Because somebody cooked somebody else cooked it, but you cooked yours out of love. It's a whole total different thing. You know what I'm saying? So because that's also a work of faith, a work of the heart. Well, verse 17 says, so if it's so faith, if it have not work, is that being alone? And I think a lot of times, our marriage not working, we have a lot of talk, but not enough to back it up. No acts, no, not, no action to back up anything. Everybody talk, a good talk, but we ain't doing nothing. And I think that's why not making our marriage work, because all we ever do is talk about stuff, but we never do anything. Everybody shake their head, yeah, I see, I see, I see. And you're like, yeah, I see nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You it's gotta true. see right, something. Right. You got to see something. After we talk, there has to be works. When does works, acts of love begin? Right away. Right away. Right away in the marriage. So, yeah, man said that has faith and I have works. Show me that faith without that works. And I will show thee my faith by my works. I will show you how I love you by what you do. I will, I will know you love me by what you do, not only by what you say. I will know you love me by how you go out your way and do what you do for me. That's how I know. That's how I know. I love you so what? It's empty, just talk. But what is your acts to back it up, to prove to me? See, faith got to have, you see, faith got to have an evidence. And love got to have an evidence too. Right? For God so loved the world. Yes. And he stopped right there. Mm. I so love y'all. I'm, I'm stopping. Mm. I ain't doing nothing else. I so, oh, I love y'all. You marry, I love you. You feel that? Yes. It's complete. I'm sending you flowers. You feel that love? Mm. No. Love said this, right? You're about to die if I don't do something about it. Yeah. So love said, God so loved the world that he did what? He gave. See, we see the evidence of God's love. What is the evidence of God's love? Jesus. Now, if you don't want to take that love, that's on you, but I gave it. I give you the power to refuse that love. See, the thing is that, let me tell you something, and nothing wrong to give in love, but not, don't get mad for people, uh, something wrong with you because they can't receive your love and they refuse your love. You know, most people, you don't see God say, well, they don't receive my love. 200 people here don't receive my love. I ain't gonna love no more. No. That person that received your love because they had a, you, you have to give people choice to either receive your love or not receive your acts of love. And if they don't receive your acts of love, it doesn't take anything away from you or you being loved or anything. At all. At all. It is a choice. I hear women say, I love this man so much. No, that's what you were supposed to do. If they don't accept it, uh, if that man or woman don't accept, that's on them. It shouldn't change you and who and what you are. Matter of fact, it should increase your love and give you more faith. Maybe my love was not received for this person because it's a choice by them. But somebody would make us would make a choice to receive the love I had. That's good, bro. That's good. That's good. Oh, that's good. That's good. And you know, and, and, and well, let me 19. Now I believe that there is one God. It's not enough to say, well, I believe, I believe in God. Look at this. Thou doest well. He said, you're doing good. He said, the devils also believe and tremble. He said, the devil believes there's God too. Right. Right. But guess what they don't do? Accept them. Right. What they, see, matter of fact, I don't think the devils have to believe there's a God. They already know there's a God. Right. 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 They already know there's a God. And they tremble. They, some of them have seen him. Mm -hmm. Or know where he lives and know everything about him. Right. And they still refuse him. Mm -hmm. So believing is not just enough in the marriage. Loving is not just enough in the marriage. There has to be acts of love in the marriage for the marriage to become what That's it right. needs to be. That's right. Amen? That's right. So we're going to stop right here. I pray this word That's bless you and strengthen you. You don't have to be long to be strong. But I thank God for strength and strongness. I pray. Some of you begin to sow acts of love, no matter how small, 
no matter how big, begin to sow it in your marriage. And you know something, don't say, well, I, you know, you know, Pastor, I did it for a week, two weeks, three weeks, and I don't see nothing. Sometimes, like I said, you sow in one season, but you reap another season. Amen? And I pray the word bless you and, and, um, and strengthen you. I pray that we love one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember, your wife is your brother and your husband. You know, your, your, your wife is your sister and your husband is your brother. Remember, the Bible says if you hit your brother, <laughs> Amen. You're in trouble because that's your brother and your sister. So let's love each other in the marriage because we're still brothers and sisters first before we husband and wife. So let's love one another. Amen. So I could, I hate her. No, well, you just hit your sister. You're going to hell, brother. Stop. <laughs> I was in the movie. But anyway, I pray that the word bless you and train you. My name is Pastor Emmanuel, and I have with me. Minister Keith Dogan. But we have one thing to say to you Jesus is Lord. God bless you.